Dubbed as Africa's economic giants, Nigeria and South Africa account for one half of sub-Saharan Africa's GDP and are potentially two of the biggest drivers of growth for the region as a whole. Their intra-regional and financial links have expanded significantly in recent years, but it is widely recognized that there is still a long road ahead in terms of achieving optimum economic integration. During the apartheid era, Nigeria was one of the foremost supporters for the South African liberation movement. The Nigerian government had issued more than 300 passports to South Africans who were looking to go abroad. The end of apartheid in 1994 saw South African businesses supporting the immigration of professionals into South Africa, which was followed by an influx of Nigerian citizens but the relationship between the two countries was soured by reported rapid growth in organized crime, such as drug trafficking, linked to Nigerian syndicates, particularly between the period 1994 and 1998. However, the biggest and most bitter strain on South Africa-Nigeria relations is economic. South Africa, known as the largest economy in Africa, gained the reputation as the go-to country for companies wanting to invest on the continent. But due to South Africa's strong trade links to Europe, the country's growth prospects remain subdued, with GDP predicted to grow below 3% this year. Nigeria, on the other hand, is forecasted to grow at a rate of more than 7%, challenging South Africa's gateway to Africa status. South Africa, as I said, remains important, but equally West Africa, particularly Nigeria, and East Africa, uh, really focused on Kenya in particular, are all emerging gateways. South Africa remains important because of its uh, large diversified economy and a lot of the infrastructural support that we do have here that are really world class in many ways. If we talk about access to financial institutions, uh, legal services, the rule of law, um, accounting, reporting etc. That's really I think uh, our claim to fame there. The two countries have proven to be each other's key trading partners on the continent. According to South Africa's Department of Trade and Industry, total trade between South Africa and Nigeria grew to almost 23 billion rand from 174 million between 1999 and 2008, accounting for nearly a quarter of South Africa's total trade on the continent in 2008. SA exports to Nigeria are mainly vehicles, aircrafts and vessels, foodstuffs and chemicals, while imports from Nigeria include mineral products, plastic products, machinery and equipment. Although South African exports to Nigeria climbed to just over 7 billion from 505 million in 2008, trade volumes have expanded significantly to 30 billion US dollars and are said to rise even higher due to Nigeria's massive oil reserves. Right now, the trade between Nigeria and South Africa appears to be lopsided. But technically, it appears to favor Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But because the only item of trade is crude oil, while for the South Africa, they have so many companies, banks, all these other ones, doing businesses in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We are trying to see how we can break this vicious circle of lopsidedness. South Africa has close to 100 companies operating in Nigeria. One of the most significant transactions include the popular retail shop, ShopRite, which will be the anchor food tenant in the Abuja shopping mall. But despite this development, South Africa is still accused of having unfriendly investment laws, particularly towards Nigerian businesses and investors. The Nigerian government has been talking to the South Africans to open up because there appears to be a lot of obstacles on the way mm -hmm. that some of the Nigerian companies wishing to do business. Nigeria and South Africa have much in common from their global aspirations and regional dominance to their domestic challenges. And it is through solidifying their bilateral trade relations that the two countries can achieve true economic synergy. Dumisho Mahanyele, Johannesburg. 
Now joining me in studio to discuss the role and relationship between South Africa and Nigeria are Eunice Silliman, Chairman of KPMG South Africa, and Diana Games, Chief Executive of Africa at Work and Honorary CEO of the South African Nigeria Chamber of Commerce. We had also invited Faluso Phillips, Chairman of the Nigeria SA Chamber of Commerce, but unfortunately his plane was delayed and he won't be joining us after all. But welcome my two guests here. Thank you. You have both been instrumental in setting up the two Chambers of Commerce. Perhaps tell us a little bit about the history of how they came about and their role and mandate. Eunice, you were in Lagos between 1998 and 2000. Uh, what was your experience there? Well, I, I got there, as you said, 1998, and uh, it was soon after the military rule had say, it terminated, and it was a good time to start looking at how we can bridge the gap between Nigeria and South Africa. And that's where we actually started the Nigeria-South Africa Chamber of Commerce. And I think that was instrumental in really getting relationships going. Because mm -hmm. prior to that, because of the military rule and the environment between the two countries, it wasn't really a, a cordial, let's say, relationship at that stage. But the chamber was a good platform to start the trade moving. And uh, subsequently, when I returned to South Africa, we then formed the equivalent sister organization called the South Africa Nigeria Chamber of Commerce, which Diana mm -hmm. has served as the honorary CEO since then. Mm. Diana, what has your experience been with the, with the Chamber of Commerce and how far have we come in terms of trade? Well, in, in terms of the Chamber, uh, I think we've, seen, we've certainly seen a lot of growth, really more in the last two or three years. I think it was quite slow to get going. There were a lot of big, um, big South African companies who were, were formed the backbone of the Chamber in the, in the early days. And they are still, I'm pleased to say, most of them are still members. Um, but, but, but it took a while for smaller companies to catch up. It, it's, uh, a lot is made of the sort of South African invasion, if you like, of, of Nigeria. But it has been really over the last few years. I think MTN was, a, was certainly a, a game changer mm -hmm. for the relationship. And that was sort of 2001. But um, because it not only improved doing the, the, the ability to do business in Nigeria, but it also signaled that it was a market that you could do business in. Um, but in, t uh, in terms of the, the relationship, I see uh, it, it has changed a lot. There's certainly been a lot of, a lot of development, uh, good and bad. We've seen a, there's been quite a lot of testing times. A lot of, a lot of the potential is, is, has been highlighted. And yes, there's a lot more South African companies there now than there, there were 10 years ago, 15 years when I first started traveling to Nigeria. Certainly marked by different phases um, in, in the relationship in the last 10 years. Um, we also saw in the insert there, Tamisha um, um, phrased it as there's the economic bitter strain. Um, would, you, would you agree that that is the case? I think there has been ups and downs. Um, but the fact of the matter is we need to work together. And it's about building those stronger relationships. I think when we look at what's been happening in recent times, there's been some interaction which will contribute to greater relationships being built. And I think that's fundamental in, in having the right platform to increase trade. If you look at the fact that we import a significant amount of our oil from Nigeria, mm. which comprises probably 95% of the exports of Nigeria to South Africa, we could then conversely really increase our trade and exports to Nigeria and also invest in the country. And I think we found in recent times with the investment of Tiger Brands into Dangoti Flower and conversely companies coming into South Africa, there's need for increased trade, and I think it also boils down to trust and relationships, mm -hmm. because there has been a skepticism in terms of trade. And I think the initial weakness that we had as South Africans is going in arrogantly thinking we know everything. But I think we've yeah. learned the hard way that that has changed. But uh, that, is an, uh, that is a, a very important point, um, because we saw the, the que other countries are questioning South Africa's positioning as uh, positioning itself as the gateway to the rest of Africa. Do you see this as, as, a, as a sort of a holistic problem in terms of political tensions, economic uh, tensions as well, Diana? Well, I, I, would, I would disagree that South Africa has p particularly positioned itself as a gateway to Africa. I think it's more or less um, come about as a, as a sort of an ad hoc um, a thing where, where companies chose South Africa because of the uh, infrastructure, the, the fact that things worked, the lifestyle issues and so on. Mostly uh, multinationals from America, Britain and, and Europe and so on. Uh, so, so I don't know if that's particularly the positioning that, that, that is perhaps offending other African countries. I think they're, they're, they're different issues. The sense of South Africa being seen as an exception in Africa, which I think South Africa itself perhaps does. They've, I think business people have conveyed that in just what Eunice was saying about going into countries, seeing them looking, uh, a, a, you know, a little sort of de deteriorated infrastructure and so on, and thinking that we were somehow uh, better than them and behaving that way. 
and also politically, uh, I think we haven't done enough, our government hasn't done enough to court the rest of Africa. We have mm -hmm. done some, uh, you know, there's been opening of new missions, there's been a couple of state visits, a handful, I would argue, in the rest of Africa, compared to, for example, a Chinese, uh, you know, uh, the head of state who will come here and see, go to 10 countries in, in, a, in a matter of two weeks. Mm -hmm. We haven't really positioned ourselves well in that way, in really courting Africa and make, you know, in opening up to the other African countries to trade more with us and uh, and so on but i would disagree that it's, it's it's anything against nigerians in particular i think that's there's a lot of misinformation between the two in relationship between the two countries um that that in an effort to really make this relationship work have to be tackled and one of those is and i've heard it a lot from nigerians i've even heard it said at ministerial level that that south africa um, has has uh, policies in place to prevent south africans from from in investing in in South Africa and of course that isn't true I mean I think it's the same mm -hmm. for for everybody who wants to to South Africa is a diff difficult country to invest in I think and if uh, depending on you know especially if you're a country like Nigeria mm -hmm. where you don't have um, you know your your um, output is is very easily absorbed by the by the large market at home uh, and the politicians make a lot of the trade imbalance and I think my argument is always the reason that South African companies are in Nigeria in in the number that they are is because that's where the opportunity is and that Nigerians should ra rather see South Africa as a resource that they can um, use to build their own businesses in Nigeria and elsewhere on the continent. I mean, if, if we look at this broadly, there is a bit of a, there seems to be a bit of a race, and I know you're talking about misperceptions, but we have, for example, the, the fact that South Africa is in G20, um, it's on BRICS as well, and then recently, of, of course, the appointment of Nkosi Zana Dlamini Zuma mm -hmm. as the, uh, leading up the, uh, heading up the AU. Um, so there would seem to be a skewing of mm. importance of importance put onto South Africa in terms of leading the economic race for for Africa. Yes. Yeah, they talk about 2015 overtaking South Africa as the largest economy in the continent, and Nigerians in general terms are a very uh, proud nation, and they would want to have leading roles. So, and I think that's where the two countries need to work together and make sure that recognition is given to the best people to lead whatever role they may be across the continent so that it's best for Africa. And whether we represent the G20 as Nigeria or South Africa shouldn't actually matter as long as we've got the best person leading the team. Well, it seems that there needs to be a lot of work between the politicians and the, and, and the business folk uh, regarding this issue. We're going to take a short break and more on Invest Africa when we return. Stay tuned.